Hey guys, I am back, and it is Shit Hits the Fan Day. It's a miserable rainy day outside, so it's kind of fitting that this box arrives today. We just got Club Tack the other day, and uh, jumping right back into another box, which is actually kind of sad, because it's like the April boxes are, are just about done already, too. But still, it's exciting that we're getting them all, like, one after another, just bam, 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 bam. So, anyway... Let's get into this one. Today I'm going to be doing the unboxing. I don't know how many of you guys remember this cool knife right here, but this is basically an all Wilkins knives griptilian. I did a video once showing how you can customize your griptilian with accessories from Wilkins knives. Wilkins, amazing knife designer. He's an American, he lives in Germany. He has his own line of knives that are really, really like top quality stuff. There's Peter Kitty Cat Feet. Uh, and he has Griptilian accessories. This happens to take it to the very extreme. This basically, the only thing that's Griptilian still in here is the liners and the access lock. It's a Wilkins blade, Wilkins um, scales, titanium anodized scales and everything. But I'll put a link to this video in the video description so you can see. But, you know, I mean, you can just, like, replace the Griptilian blade with one of his, like, you know, really well-made blades. Uh, you can replace just the scales if you want, or, you know, clipper. Anyway, you can do a lot of stuff, but um, let's get into this box for April 2018. It's kind of a heavy box this month. So, let's see. I already see a hat that... I'm not sure I would wear the hat that much, but I like the saying on it. Uh, one repeated item right here. Looks like... Uh, two repeated items. Um, I don't know what else. You know, I really need to start just opening these boxes upside down to get straight to the card. But I'm going to take everything out, line it up, and that way we can um, go through it. Alright, so everything here is taken out of the box. Uh, just a review so that you understand how this box works. So we are looking at the Elite box. The Elite box is going to cost you $89.99 a month. They say that the MSRP value here is $128.86. In the Elite box, you get everything that comes before it. So we get everything in the Basic box. We get everything in the Pro box. If you were, for example, to get the Pro box, you get everything in the Basic box as well. We're going to go through it from the Basic box all the way on down and take a look at everything that comes in it. So, let's start with the Jumbo Green Light Stick. I'm sorry, let's look at the basic box, which would cost $19.99 a month with an MSRP of $43.93. And we start with the Jumbo Green Light Stick for $2.98. This has already fallen on the ground, and I'm hoping it comes in some kind of protective tube so that I haven't like already pre-cracked it. This is the biggest damn light stick that I've ever seen. And me and the boys, we all love light sticks. I'm going to tear this open just to take a look real quick. Um, and it does not. I hope that I have not pre-cracked it. It doesn't feel like, it feels like the glass vial inside is still intact. I have not seen a light stick this big. Uh, except in movies. Like in any movie where they have to go down a big like shaft or elevator shaft or like cave or something. They always like break a bunch of these and throw them down to light up the shaft. But this is pretty cool. And for... Two dollars, three dollars. I've seen regular sized um, Silum Light Sticks cost this much. I want to, I want to crack this thing so bad, but I only have one, and then I won't be able to use it again. But these things are are awesome. Like, I mean, like military wise, I used to use these. We use these for for a lot of stuff um, in all sorts of different co colors. When I was still actually like really Doc P, like the medic Doc P, I would have a blue one when we'd go on company maneuvers. Um, whenever we were just wrapped out somewhere um, when guys needed to find me for any kind of medical stuff to avoid waking up everybody around me there'd be a blue one hanging up if we were in a in a tent it would be um, above my little cot uh, if we were just in a hole there'd be a blue one like kind of pegged into the dirt somewhere but that way the guys could find me without having to like rustle around and wake everybody else up we use them for marking all sorts of stuff. These are really cool. The boys just use them as lightsabers or whatever other fun, I don't want to go to bed, kind of cool dark toys camping. Awesome. Really cool stuff. It's hard for me to imagine there are people that don't know what these things are, but 
in case you don't, they glow pretty bright for, you know, whatever amount of time. They're all a little bit different. This one says 12 hours. Now, you're not going to get the brightest glow for 12 hours, but you're going to get a pretty good glow. Makes no heat. Problem is, you can't turn it off. So once you turn it on, it's on. The only thing you can do to kind of slow down the dissipation of that light is to put it in a freezer for a while. But even that, that just slows down the chemical reaction a lot. It's still, you know, it's, it's going to go away. That'll buy you a day or so but it's, it's gonna die off. Like once you crack it open, it's open, which is why I don't wanna do it right now. Um, there are some really, really cheesy cheap ones. I hesitate to say made in China, but you know, there are some really cheap ones you can buy at like Dollar Store or Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something. You get like a tube, like a dollar for a tube of 20 of them. They're really thin though. And sometimes you'll get ones that don't even light up. It, you're better off buying like the actual well-made like you know high quality ones just because you know they're always going to work and they're always going to work well they're better to spend a couple bucks on them i think than to get the cheap ones uh, but anyway this is going to go in the excited pile because always a good use and one this big um, yeah it's one big one that is you know I, it's going to be one use and that's it but boy what a big light stick so i see your schwartz is as big as mine so item number one is going right in the excited pile. I'll move the pile down as we as we drain this pile out a little bit as we go. So number two, the second protects the first cap for $9.98. Now this is, uh, shit hits the fan, is where I, I got the hat that I hate but love. The hat that I wear for a lot of my face-to-face -face videos and everything. Um, that's funny. That is just ironically funny to me that this hat is made in China. So, the second protects the first. I've talked about this a bit in some other videos, why I feel like the Second Amendment is the most important amendment in the Constitution, because it does protect the first, because it protects all the other amendments, and I'm not going to get into that now, but I do agree with the sentiments on this hat, and we've got our little don't tread on me sneak there. I know it has an actual name. Pretty sure this is the same company that made the super unique artwork camouflage hat that um, I wear in the other videos. I apologize for being a little bit backlit there. And I have no glasses, so I might look a little bit weird right now, but what do you think? Huh? Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll do this hat in uh, some of the videos too? Huh? Yes, no, maybe so? I don't know. But at least it's a hat I agree with. It's kind of a thin hat, I mean, and I'm not really a hat wearer. Video Addict would probably get much more use out of it than I would. Still have only seen him with that hat one time in my whole life, and it was still in a life-altering event. But, um, I mean, it's, I, it's a cool hat. I like the hat. I do. So, uh, we're going to put this in the excited pile because it, I like the hat. It's something that I maybe would display somewhere. Um, I don't know if I'd wear it around. Because I, you know, I'm not a hat kind of guy. We know that, but I'll definitely you'll you'll see this in videos. You'll see that again in videos. Now, now we're gonna go to the five pack P38GI style can openers for $2.99. Now, I am not saying that this is not a useful item. I'm saying we've gotten a lot of these before in various things. Uh, we've gotten this exact same thing, and the shit hits the fan box. Um, and I understand that, you know, maybe this is the first shit hits the fan box that some people have gotten, but when you start to recycle items, it, it makes me kind of wonder, like, is it time to stop getting the box when we've gotten at least three items that I can see right here in the box that we've gotten before? Like, maybe it's time to say, all right, have we gotten all the good items that this company has to send? I don't know. So I'm actually, you know... I'm torn as to whether or not I want to throw this in the the why or the useful pile. Oh, I don't know. I'll probably put it in the useful pile because they have uses. They do. It's just three dollars. I mean, you can get these things for like thirty cents each. Um. I'm, you know what? I'm going to put it in the Y pile. I am. I'm putting it in the Y pile. 
only because for my particular taste and my particular use, it's just like, why, why, why again? Um, I mean, I understand the why, but you certainly don't need a bag of five of them. Like, it, it, give me one on like a lanyard or something, but like a bag of five, I don't know. That's just my personal taste, you know, you guys can disagree. Okay, now we're going for the, okay, cool. So we're getting something awesome. Potentially awesome. Maybe awesome. I don't know. We'll see. But a Raptor machete with a nylon belt sheath for twelve ninety nine. Well, here's our Raptor machete box. Once again, handcrafted in China. I wonder if handcrafted means like by hand they press a button. I've used that joke over and over, but I'm pretty sure that's what they mean by handcrafted in China. They press a button on the machine that makes the machete. All right, so. We've got our standard do not eat. Nylon sheath. Uh, doesn't really feel like it has any rigidity. Feels like the knife is doing all the rigidity for us. With one belt loop for vertical carry only. But I mean, it's a machete. What do you expect? Um, simple though, you know. Holds the thing in. It's what it needs to do. Pretty decent snap though. Not gonna like rip out or anything anytime soon. And then we have the actual machete. Now, is this just on tightly or is it covered in oil? Mm, a little bit of both. I pause the camera just for a second to give this a little bit of a wipe down, get some of that oil off. Um, a little bit of wobbly there in the hilt and the handle is not I don't know, it's hard to illustrate that here, but these scales wobble around just a little bit. They're not entirely comfortable either. I think they need a little bit more refinement, a little bit more finishing, and there is no real good grip to them at all. There's nothing to hold your hand on there. Like, if these were to get wet, um, your hands got sweaty. Uh, it's cool looking. It's got a nice finish on it, but... It's a relatively small handle, as machetes go. I mean, the weight and balance feels feels good for doing your chopping chores, but the grip is awful. It's uncomfortable. It really, it, I mean, it really bites in the hand up on the top there, um, and a little bit on the bottom. It just it doesn't feel good in your hand. Um, yeah, these are for looks only. There's there's no function to them. They wouldn't really saw through a thing if you wanted them to. I guess we need to test the edge a little bit. It still exists. So let's make use of it. Well, at least it cut through the P-cord pretty well. If it wasn't such a miserable day, I'd take this outside and do some chopping with it. I have a feeling, you know, a chop test would cut through the cord pretty well, just based on how well it sliced the cord. I'd like to do another one. It's not bad. It's actually not bad for a machete. I mean, a little unwieldy to do a paper test with a blade this big, but let's see if I can get to do that again. It's not bad. I'm happy with that. Ignore that. I mean, the first two were, were good. It's just it's hard to do a good paper test with a blade that big. Um, the problem is everything else about the way it's made. But would they say for thirteen dollars? I mean, for thirteen dollars, I don't know. I'm gonna put this one in the useful pile. You know, for again, if we consider the theme of the box, I mean, shit hits the fan. You keep it. It's not incredibly well made, but wouldn't throw it away or anything. Um, and for thirteen dollars, you know, I mean, I'd rather. I mean, really, this to me would be not more than a nine ninety nine item, but. There it is. So, yeah. Moving on. Oh, right back to another knife. Black Legion Assisted Opening Military Fighter for $7.99. And here is a Black Legion knife. Black Legion is always uh, interesting. Um, so this feels like aluminum scales. Centering is horrendous. 
glass breaker slash temple smasher with a line cutter in the middle of it. At least it's a deep carry clip. You get no options for it at all, but you know, it's there. You've got a pocket opener, a wave opener. That's nice. Um, and the weight is actually not too bad. Let's see. Eh, I've seen worse. So this is, um, whoa, blade is kind of wobbly. Let's take a look at that lock up there. It's not bad. Um, not bad. I mean, this is a, I mean, it is a cheap knife. It is. Um, but we've seen more expensive knives that didn't survive that that test there and that the locks just folded up and, and collapsed, right? Handle gives you plenty of space for your hand when you've got big hands like me. Um, it gives you a fair amount of grip, too. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a bad knife. I, I walk into a Black Legion unboxing thinking, well, it's Black Legion. It's going to be cheap. It's going to be crappy. But... And again, it's, it's hard to do a proper paper test because I'm trying not to catch those serrations in there. Um, but the straight part of the edge seems to be finished pretty well. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, for a $7.99 knife, it's not something that I would proudly display. It's not something that I want as my, you know, primary carry. But it doesn't seem to be too bad a knife for the money, you know, you're paying. Spring works pretty well. It's off-centered, but I'm willing to bet that's because it's a Black Legion knife. Well, it's off-centered, I mean, in all seriousness, and it's got a little bit of blade play in it. So that probably speaks to maybe we just need to tighten that pivot up a little bit, and that might uh, kill two birds with one stone. Let's see how this is. Well, okay. So that line cutter could use a little bit of work, but and when it finally did cut, it's it's not a, the cleanest, but you know what? It worked. Um, so this guy I probably would put in the useful pile. Again, emergency use, backup use, not something that I would keep around, you know, for my EDC, but definitely worthy of a giveaway knife, right? And then finally, last item in the basic box, Trailblazer folding pocket stove with fuel tabs for $6.99. Here we go again. What is it with these stoves all of a sudden? This looks like a knockoff of the exact one we got in Battle Box just a few days ago. I mean, it's the it's a knockoff. It is not the real one, um, but I mean, design and everything. And this one comes with four fuel tabs. And the price on this, though, six ninety nine. The one in Battle Box was more than that. Like I said, these things you can get for like five dollars. I'm sure this one works just as well as the one in Battle Box, just as well. I could do a whole video on the various options for fuel cubes for these kinds of stoves, if I wanted to. Uh, there's so many different choices for the different kinds of fuel that you could buy and burn these things. I'm not gonna beat this one to death. If you haven't seen me talk about this, I'm gonna put a link to the Battle Box unboxing where I actually go into depth and explain exactly why this is right side up and how this stove works. Look in the video description for that if you want to see that because we've uh, talked about these kinds of stoves in now three different companies' um, boxes. This is going into the useful pile, though, just because um, I think there are... I, I know there's, there's good virtues for this stove, and a lot of you have spoken out that you really like those kinds of stoves, and I'm not disagreeing with any of you for those, like, why they are good for the reasons they're good. They're just not my particular favorite types of stoves. In an emergency, they are good though, because you know dry fuel and portability and everything, that's great. Um, but I'm putting in the pile because I'm putting in the pile. So there you go. So that does it for our basic box. So like I said, $19.99 a month with an MSRP of $43.93. Let's move into the Pro Box. Pro Box is gonna cost you $49.99 a month with an MSRP of $85.89. I should also uh, just stress again that these MSRPs are not for, the, these prices are fixed, what you pay for the box. The MSRP is month to month with what they put in the box. 
So with the Pro, you get everything that's in the basic box, plus the Shit Hits the Van Survival Guide for $9.99. Let's see what comes in this. Now, I know for a fact that they probably get this thing produced for, I mean, they print it themselves or they have it printed. This probably cost them a dollar. Um, and I don't know if this is any different than previous ones that we've seen in Shit Hits the Fans. I mean, I'd have to go looking in old boxes to figure out if it's if it's different information or the same. And this is good info. It, this is. Um, but this whole pamphlet is probably not worth $9.99. I mean, in terms of monetary value of the paper and the printing, I, I don't think so. Um, I think that for $9.99, you can get an actual bound printed book with much more info in it than this. So, again, useful to have. It's, it's a good, you know, primer. It's like, you know, it's got some good highlighted sections. Um, we've seen it before. It's cool to have very basic stuff. Again, I'm putting it in, in the useful section, not the excited section, because it's good basic info. It's, it's not comprehensive. Now let's go to the Bushmaster 18-inch, oh, wow, a blowgun. Bushmaster 18-inch blowgun for $9.99. I've never had a blowgun before in my life. Aiden, I got a blowgun in this box. So it comes with a number of darts. Um, I mean, very basic construction. Aluminum tube. Nice squishy uh, holder. Uh, sorry, nice squishy grip. And then these little catches to put your darts in. Um, very basic aiming reticle there. I guess you just drop your dart in the mouthpiece and um, everything I know about blowguns I learned from the opening scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Whoa! Actually, that was pretty cool. Let's do another one. Let's do another one, why not? I don't know what the actual range of this thing is or how to be very accurate with it. Let's do that again. Let's put it in there. Let's push it into the tube. That's that's a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. That's 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 a lot of fun. Um, and they went pretty far into that box. Um, they stuck into the bottom cardboard. They didn't go all the way through. But that's... I can imagine this being a fun item. Um, if you're going to go hunting with it for a little varmint, I, you probably got to get really good at it. But I would I would put the time in to learn how to do this because it's so much fun. Um, something me and Aiden could mess with outside or in the woods or something. Yep. Yeah. Does this look exciting? Yeah. I want to try blowing those darts on the box like you did. Yeah. Well, maybe after the video, you can... Uh, We'll mess with this, you and me, okay? All right, so you know what? This is going to go in the excited pile. Um, has some practical purpose, and it's fun. Here comes Ethan to even check it out. All right, so cool. So this is going to go now. How many, let's check out how many darts it actually comes with. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten darts. Um, I still, right now, I consider this more of a novelty than an actual survival type tool, but... Maybe with a little bit of time and effort to use it. Um, big difference between this and, say, the crossbow that I got in that Alpha Outpost that I hated is that this is this is fun to use. Like, this is something I would mess around with. Um, whereas, you know, and, and the, the, the price is a lot better than uh, what they charge, you know, $9.99 to play with this thing versus what they charged for that crossbow that I found for like half the price online. Anyway, so the Bushmaster 18-inch blowgun, we're going to put this in the excited pile because um, I think it has potential for good use and for fun. All right, now we've got a Trailblazer mosquito head net for $4.99. So mosquito head net, good for mosquitoes, good for some other things too, I'm sure. Um, cinches up nice and tight at the bottom. I mean, $4.99, I feel like even that might be a little overpriced for what you're getting here, but it is what it is. I feel like I had to do this and demonstrate mosquito head net. Mosquito head net. Yeah? 
There it is. <sighs> the mosquito head net I will also put in the useful pile. So it'll go right there. Um, because it's useful, not terribly exciting. And then finally, the last item in the Pro Box is an OD military grade waterproof poncho for $16.99. I will say this feels like a pretty heavy grade poncho here. Come in a pouch. It does. It comes in a zippered pouch. Military grade. All the seams are coated. Keep it nice and waterproof. Drawstring hood. Um, I am never going to fold this up and get it back in that little pouch, am I? Sides are snapped together. So it is very similar to a, a military, actual military poncho here, where it comes apart and you can do things with it, make a shelter half, make a little lean to, make an emergency stretcher if you had to, because it opens all the way up and stuff. Actually, this is nice, and I like that it's not camouflage, it's regular old OD green, which is my favorite color for gear. I'm not even going to try to fold this thing up because I'm going to fail right now to fold it up the way it came. Um, feels a little bit different than the standard military poncho, but at the same time, similar to it. I'm going to put this in the excited pile, believe it or not, because I feel like there's a lot that I can do with this. This material alone, if you were to cut it up, you could use it. Um, you could glue this on to, say, an old flight suit and then take some the netting part from camouflage netting, throw away the fake leaves. You've got the beginnings of a very basic ghillie suit there, so that's pretty awesome. So that's cool. So that does it for the Pro Box. So we've done the Basic Box, we've done the Pro Box, moving into the Elite Box. Like we said, $89.99 a month. This month's MSRP $128.86. If you're looking for the figure four deadfall kit. So we've looked at this in another box. It has come in another box and it is basically how to make a deadfall trap. And uh, I have not used it, but I've heard it works pretty well. I'm not even gonna take it all out because I'd have to like set it up. But for your survival purposes, um, rather than having to carve these things um, to make yourself a little trap to catch some small game, there you go. I, I like this because it just saves you time and effort. You can take these out. You can pack them any way you want. Um, I'm not going to lie. It, it's not just like take out, put together, and use. you got to practice with it. But it's actually, once you get good at it, a pretty reliable way to make yourself a little trap. How much do they say it costs? $9.99? I mean, you're paying for the convenience of not having to carve all these things yourself. Otherwise, you would have to do that and everything. So, I'm putting this in the excited pile. It actually, it, it works very reliably once you get it going. Um, and when you know how to use it, and you put the time in to know how to use it and learn, it's pretty good. So that goes there. All right, next we've got the, I don't know what SOA, Sons of Anarchy? Well, maybe the SOA Vigilante Concealable Neck Knife for $19.99. Now, $19.99 is a lot for a knife in a shoot hits the fan box, so my expectations going into this are pretty high. So let's find out. So first, SOA. What does SOA stand for here? It's handcrafted in China. My expectations just went way down. SOA, they're not telling us what SOA stands for at all, but... Here's some specs on it. All they're really not telling us here is weight. Um, so it is a neck knife, but it also has a clip that we can reposition, which is nice. Looks like we can reposition this. Right now it's set up for uh, vertical handle up. You can set it up for vertical handle down. Looks like you can also set it up for horizontal, which is really cool. I actually might be a fan of this knife. It's got a pretty small blade, but 
you know what? Besides the stupid motto on the blade, um, and we have no idea what kind of steel it's actually made of. I'm sure it just says stainless steel somewhere. Um, but I like the G10. I always like layered sculpted G10. I like the handle. I like the size of the handle. It's not bad. The grip feels good. For its purposes, you know what? I actually like this knife. Now, 1999. If it was made out of a real, out of a good steel, I could see that. The fact that they don't even tell us what kind of steel it's made of makes me think it's like 420 or one of the nameless 440s or you know something like that. But so I have questions about the price, but the the knife itself, the shape, the fact that you've got your Kydex sheath with all your different carry options, that's pretty good. I, I like that. Well, and now we might have hit something. There, that's not bad. Cuts cord and paper pretty well. Shane's will probably cut other things pretty well too. The handle could be a little bit more comfortable, honestly, but for what its intended purpose is, you know, I think we can live with it. Uh, I'd like to handle a little bit bigger for my hands, but then again, you know, it's a small knife. It's a neck knife. It's a, you know, concealed knife. Slightly larger handle would probably mess it up. If these areas were not so pronounced, though, it might fit my hand just a little bit better, but I can deal with it. So I actually like the knife. It could use some improvements. I just the the price I think that they are that they want for it is you know that they're estimating for is a little crazy. But I'm gonna put this one in the excited pile. I think this one has potential and I think I can work with it. I think I can also do some sheening there to change the profile of the handle, make it a little more comfortable. So that's Q. We've got one last item here, and that last item is the Reptile Tools Fubar Grapple Hook with Paracord for $12.99. Now this is another one that I know we've gotten before. And, um, look, the truth is, I just, I think this is, this item is more gimmicky than anything else. I ended up giving the last one of these to Aiden, just because, uh, I don't feel like I had a lot of use, first of all, these come all covered in wax. I don't have a lot of use for a grappling hook, as far as I can see. Now, you know, I can put it away, just in case, shit hits the fan, but you build yourself this little grappling hook, and then you tie the paracord to it, and I, I don't know, it just, there's nothing about it that struck me as, like, really cool, very useful. Um, I think that I could do what it does with some other stuff, but, you know, your opinion matters. I'd like to hear what you guys think of the specific grappling hook. Uh, it is small. You could put these in any pack and put it together easily and use it, take it apart, and, you know, reuse it over and over and over. $12.99 is not a bad price, I guess. I, I don't buy grappling. For me, it goes in the Y pile, though, because I figure there's probably maybe some better items that they could have stocked this box with than that. But that's just my opinion. So, you know, that's open to debate for all of you guys what you think. But that does it for this box. So, you know, overall, in this box, I think I think we did okay. We did pretty good. There were, like I said, repeat items. But if you take a look at the breakdown, let me reorganize real quick. All right, so if we wrap it up, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six items in the excited pile. One, two, three, four, five. Bless you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Five in the useful pile, and we've got two in the Y pile. So not a bad ratio overall. I mean, there's only two items that I really feel like I I'm really not happy with. Uh, there were quite a few repeat items, though. But, I mean, again, we understand that they have to assume that not everybody has gotten every box, that this is going to be the first box for some people. We have to take stuff like that into account. Good box. Not a great box, but a good box. I'm not, you know, sure if the money value is there, the dollars spent to, to what we got. But there are some pretty good items in this one. Some things I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with. So, your thoughts. What do you guys think? Um, I think I'm going to 
forgo my normal upload schedule. There'll probably be a weekend upload just so I can get this one up with the Ravencrest video and with the Club Tag video and keep things going that way because I already have some stuff that's ready to go for next week's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, anyway, guys, there we go. Shit hits the fan mystery box for April 2018. I'm going to go... I'm going to go outside with Aiden and play this blowgun a little bit. Get familiar with it. In the meantime, you guys are awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.